You can take the same plots that you see on the right and now put them out in, uh, on four different plots and you can see that you start out with a band edge of 0.87 uh, of the local band uh, edge then to 0.84, 0.83, uh, 84, and then 0.5. And you see also here, now it's on the same scale, that the light hole effectively is completely moving out of the way. It seems to be completely becoming irrelevant for the confinement. The, elect the whole wave functions will be conf completely confined by heavy hole states rather than by light hole states because they're moved out, moved out of the way. Okay. So light hole moves opposite of the heavy hole bands and the heavy hole state will dominate uh, for large indium concentrations. That means you have very strong binding. The heavy holes will be strongly bound because they see a deep quantum well and they have a heavy mass anyhow. So the ground state of the holes will be strongly confined. In the previous presentation I had already highlighted briefly the analytical formulas one can derive or one has, one uses for uh, the conduction band edge, uh, as a function of hydrostatic strain and the um, deformation potential for the conduction band, then for the valence band, and for the biaxial uh, component. And you see that the heavy hole and light hole are known to move into opposite directions, and written in here are these coefficients that one uses for the indium arsenide material system. So we see that the hydrostatic compression is weaker with the indium increase compared to the biaxial uh, compression. And that means the heavy hole moves just slightly as the conduction band moves relatively slowly and the heavy hole with the split moves quite a bit. But let me show you that just explaining the strain is not quite good enough. So if we just took um, these band edge diagrams and assume the particle in a box type calculation and looked at how much the band gap is getting narrowed as a function of strain, we find a value of roughly 100 millielectron volt or so. But the experiment shows roughly 200 millielectron volt. Okay? So just looking at the local strain band edge is not enough to explain this, this experiment. So now let's remind ourselves again, how do these quantum dots really get grown? So you have a indium arsenide being grown on gallium arsenide, and indium arsenide is a larger lattice constant. So it doesn't quite fit. So when you put them on top of each other and you have a strong sub thick substrate, basically the indium arsenide has to follow suit. It needs to expand vertically in order to fit laterally onto this Lego system, so to speak, right? Kind of jelly Lego or something. Now, after a couple of critical monolayers, the indium arsenide says, I've had it. I don't fit. I'm going to clump up. And interestingly, it clumps up into homogeneous crystal clumps, meaning without defects. It clumps up very nicely. Of course, in this pictorial diagram, this is a tiny quantum dot. In reality, they're a little bit larger, right? Like 200,000 atoms or so. Now, if you overgrow this with gallium arsenide, you, which again fits nicely, roughly on the substrate lattice constant, you can kind of see that there's a highly strained system. And the indium arsenide will push against, laterally push against the gallium arsenide because it would like to expand a little bit, right? It likes to gain some uh, relief from, from this pressure. So it can do that and it also expands vertically. So what happens now if you throw in a couple of more indium atoms into this capping layer? Right? Here's a sort of a plot of more of a realistic geometry so you have this capping, this alloy capping layer, and it's a random alloy, right? So you really, it's disordered. So let's imagine we throw in more indium atoms laterally into this lattice, okay? You can kind of imagine that 
Now the, the quantum dot uh, indium atoms that are part of the quantum dot don't get to push laterally so much anymore because there's other indium guys that push in from the outside because they also like to be on a different lattice constant. Okay, so you're throwing more indium around it, that gives the center quantum dots less chance to push laterally. So the only way they can push is vertically. Okay? That means you increase the biaxial strain in the system. Meaning you lock these center guys to be more onto this lateral lattice constant and the only place they have to go is up. They get squished more into place. They can't expand laterally, which gives them more strain in the lateral direction. So that means effectively the quantum dot is squished uh, to a smaller uh, lateral size and it expands a little bit vertically. You might say, well, how is that possible, right? It's a crystal. It's like local arrangement. That effect, the mechanical effect of these movements is tiny. <clears throat> But remember, the two lectures back, we talked about tiny changes in atom positions can have dramatic effects on the local band structure. So let's look at that. So again, here this is a, a summary of the hydrostatic strain getting a little bit weaker on the inside. But basically beforehand, in red, for without indium uh, in the buffer layer, we basically had no hydrostatic strain uh, in the lateral direction. But now with introducing some buffer layer, we introduce <coughs> some hydrostatic strain. <coughs> that means it gets, uh, the quantum dot gets pushed in the center of the device. So the vertical strain is relaxed. And so the base increases, the height increases, and you can actually measure that. You could sort of put probes here and on the top of the quantum dot and measure the base height and you can also measure the base width of these atoms you declare to be inside the quantum dot. Right? You pick an indium arsenide atom and measure how far it has moved. Right? And then you measure the distance to its complementary edge on the other side. So the base is uh, as you ramp up the indium concentration, the, uh, the base width is go coming down from 22.15 nanometers to 22 nanometers. So 0.15 nanometers, not a whole lot, right? And the height is going up from 0.45 to 0.7. So the height is going up quite a bit, but also only something like 0.3 nanometers. Not a whole lot, but more than the lateral. Side. But the, the point is